what we're going to do first is on this intake side is I've got to remove this shroud and then once this shroud is removed I will put my filter adapter on this and on my other unit when I put my filter adapter on here um, it did raise the temperature around two degrees on the internal stuff so it's just real simple you remove those four screws and then you just put the four screws back in and the reason I'm putting these on here is because this is in my garage and I don't have a very good air setup out here. So I want to kind of filter whatever's going into this unit to try to keep it just a little bit cleaner. And since I'm using these to essentially heat my garage this winter, the air filter should, well, just help it stay a little bit cleaner. So, there's not very many threads on these screws when you put this adapter on here. And if I have any links, I'll put them in the description below. I bought these on eBay, I think. I think you'd get them on Amazon. And then this is our four inch, this is a car filter. And then I'm gonna go ahead, yep, it'll fit. We'll go ahead and put this on. I have to loosen that up. See if that, that clamp works. I don't know if that one will fit on there or not. very many turns. There we go. That thing ain't gonna go nowhere. We'll go ahead and put the pre-sock on it. Try to keep a little more dirt out of it. Then we'll have to remove these four screws as well and put our adapter on there. to. 
there we go. It's incredible what the people are starting to do with 3D printers. Here's number four. Okay, cool. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hook up our power supply unit and I think pretty much you can just plug these in how you want. All the plug-ins are the same to power the unit. I don't really think that there's it's just got to be plugged in I'm not a hundred percent sure these two here are kind of off a little bit You just want to make sure that they click in when they go in. They'll make a little noise. There we go. And then for the power supply, I got these little, uh, this little metal carrier thing that I put on the other one which will hold the power supply up but you've got to bend it it's really simple to bend ah. and this is just to hold the power supply onto the the miner itself it's pretty neat, it's just something extra. Oh, you know what? I think I had the other one like this. And there's a little rail that this thing sits on, like so, that slides into the amp miner itself. And then you just kind of have to to bend it in place to hold that in secure. It's pretty neat though, it just gives it a little little different look and it keeps the power supply, if you don't have a rack, it keeps it off of that. I'm just gonna bend it a little more. This piece needs to be in. These are really easy to set up. Bit 
holds. There we go. Cool. Sweet. All right. And then on this one here on the back side, because these are so noisy, I actually have a uh, a silencer that I'm going to attach to this. It's just like a foam insert that's for cooling down the exit gas. So we'll go ahead and hook that up. that in like so. I have my clamps on backwards. That's alright. So and these do reduce the noise uh, greatly from that what's expelling out of this thing these things get super duper hot and then for the metal rack uh, just to help kind of reduce some of the noise I've got these other silicon feet and I'll that actually raise it up where I'm gonna mount it at this this exhaust piece here um, I, it may be on the shelf. It may not. I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent sure until I get it moved. I went ahead and ran the Ethernet cable here. I'm trying to get this plugged in. It looks like uh, one of my boards ain't lighting up. My camera's sliding down. What the? So we'll see about if I if I hook it up to the Ethernet if that that third board turns on. It takes a while to get these things fired up running. Hopefully that'll fix it. We'll see. And this red light, after it runs through its heating cycle to turn it on or whatever, hooked up to the internet. Once it gets hooked up to your router, it'll set up an IP address and then this light should turn green. So there we go. You've got to let it run through their little cycle. And then uh, we got it good to go. And I don't really have time tonight to walk through the other stuff of getting it hooked up to the network or whatever. But yeah, so that'll provide my heat out here. And then I'll get a little Bitcoin as I'm heating the garage. So that's kind of cool. It'll actually pay for the the energy that I'm using. Uh, I think this I think the third board is actually shut down is what it is or the lights burned out because if it wasn't working it wouldn't come up as normal status. So I've got to go into the BIOS and try to mess with it but I will show you my other one that I got set up. So basically, I might move this shelf up and down. I don't know yet. I still have it. I've got a little bit more to do out here in the garage. But by putting this here, I can kind of aim the heat to kind of go in there during the winter because I don't have anything running in there. And then my other amp miner is down here. So when I turn it on, it's going to blow 
toward the garage door so yeah it'll kind of be like a big circle of you know 99 degree you know 90 degree heat coming out of these machines so but that one all three lights came on and I got into my router and I got it set up but on on this one here that middle board each board's got a red light on it you can see it on that one and you can kind of see it on this one on this one but the middle board isn't lighting up so it may not even be on but it's it's reading that it's it's normal so anyway more videos to come so hopefully I'll get my Dreamcast set up here on the next the next one here so I'm out of here